Talking about, I should, you know, make my, I should start sharing my side and yada, yada, yada. I don't want to do that. I don't want to make, I don't want to knock her off her social media game. I don't want to make her look bad. I don't want her to lose followers because at the end of the day, those, all that provides food for my children. I just want her to speak the truth. Welcome back, YouTube. This is episode nine of Los Caminos de la Vida series. I'm actually just as surprised as you guys are to be here recording this video because if you guys remember, I recorded the last one sometime last year, the end, right? Which I thought was the end, but I now realized that it was just the beginning of the end. So I'm here to narrate the events that have transpired since September of 2022, my fallout with Walter, the father of my two youngest children and the person who strangled me in September of 2022. This is gonna be a video that's full of triggers when it comes to domestic violence, sexual abuse, a lot of things. So I need to provide with you guys a disclosure that it's it's going to be a very triggering video to watch. There's going to be a lot of receipts, a lot of malicious posts that I share um, that some of you expressed triggered you when they were happening last year on Walter's platforms. I'm going to be providing some of those in this video because it's necessary to outline the continued, abuse, the continued abuse that has occurred since the domestic violence incident. Now to this date, I have not spoken to Walter. I have kept him blocked on every outlet possible. He has found ways to finesse and try to reach out to me multiple times, which I'll document in this video. And I just wanna paint a picture for you guys of what it looks like to leave a volatile relationship, an abusive relationship and to not give access again because a lot of us a lot of the time these stories are you know that we go back and we continue you know doing rounds and in and out because we allow access back my story is a little bit differently i have actually chosen to shut the door and keep it shut and i have still dealt with a lot of abuse because of that decision and so i want to share what that's been like for me um, I didn't share a lot of it as it was happening because I was in a different state of mind. I was very weak. I was very broken. I was afraid. A lot of things that I'm no longer today. And I want to make one thing clear that has bothered me that he has misrepresented. When I say that I fear for my safety around him. Well, if you were so afraid, why would she continue speaking about you? There's a difference in being afraid of being in the same room with your abuser and being afraid to speak out against your abuser and hold him accountable. And I am not afraid to speak out against him. I am not afraid to share my story. I am not afraid to deal with the backlash anymore. I was in the beginning because I was very weak. So there is a big difference in that. I would never put myself in the same vicinity as him, which is why I have not answered any of his phone calls. I have not engaged in any direct communication with him. This has been difficult because this has been a very public breakup. A lot of this has unraveled on social media and it's made it difficult to not have any communication because technically we have had indirect communication through our social media posts. And that's, I believe, been harmful to both of us. Um, but it is what it is. So let's get into the first slide. Um, I'm going to play some clips for you guys, respond to them, and then show you kind of what has transpired since. So here we go. I wasn't out there fucking strangling her like that. That sounds fucking horrible. And it hurt to even think that she's out there saying that. We had a fucking face domestic in the United States. If I was really abusive and really crazy like she says I am, why the fuck would she get back with me? Makes no sense. Are you going to be the voice for girls in domestic violence? But charge them for it. Bro, you scheming. You fucking hella scheming, bro. Chill. Que Dios me tire un puto rayo if my hand was on your fucking throat longer than two seconds. Because you know it wasn't. Fuck, you're so full of shit. 
seconds away from death. No mames. Pases de verga. Say, fucking say shit how it is. The besties want the camera audio so we can fucking figure this out. So get the audios from those little fancy fucking cameras you just got installed so we can get this over with. So in the same post that he begins his rant with, where he clearly states, you know, I don't want to affect her. At the end of the day, this does feed my children. He starts immediately insinuating that, oh, I'm a scammer because I started charging a membership for my YouTube and that I'm a liar. And if this had actually happened, why would you get back with me? Drop the, drop the security camera footage, right? And so immediately I felt probably like most DV victims, I mean, show me one abuser that is exposed, that admits to the abuse, right? So from the beginning, his his version of events was that I'm a liar. And I wanna address a couple of things on this clip where he mentions, if I was such a bad guy, why would she get back to me? The DV, and she, you know, and she's a liar because we had a fake DV in the US. And that was such a stretch from the truth. And you guys know I come equipped with receipts. so. A, the fake, the fake DV that he was referring to is this charging document where he was charged when I was about three months pregnant with Juji's and Axel was about nine months old. He was drunk. We got into an argument. He got angry. He hit the wall. He broke a picture frame and he left. I called the police. I reported it. Um, I had never seen him. He had never been violent with me. That was the first time, so it kind of spooked me. I called the cops. I reported it, and I just wanted to make sure he didn't come back. So that night, they called him, and they said, you know, whatever, left him a voicemail because he didn't answer, and that was the end of it. Um, I had no idea that that was considered a domestic, and a few weeks later, although we had gone back together, he was charged with this charge, and that is what he's referring to as a fake DV. I never expressed he hit me. I never made anything up. This literally happened and I will show you that this is actually a pattern in his, of his behavior in his relationships where he becomes angry, he breaks shit, and then he assaults the woman. So anyway, that's point A. Point B, why would she get back with me if I'm so awful? How many women get back with men that have physically abused them? Hundreds and thousands and that's how a lot of us end up dead. That's how a, a lot of us struggle so much to leave, okay? Now, this incident that happened in Utah was not, I wasn't hit, I wasn't physically abused, I didn't view it that way. I just saw it as it was a fight, he hit something, he got mad because he was drunk, and I chalked it up to that. If he had ever put hands on me previously, this would be a different story, but that hadn't happened to me yet, okay? And next, I'm going to introduce the audios that he was calling out on social media. Post the, post the audios, because I just had installed some security cameras that did actually capture the audio. I've already shared this. I shared this in September, but I'm gonna make it a part of this video. In this audio, you can clearly hear what happened and how it happened. He still managed to twist the events. Um, I thought that by releasing this video, that would shut up any claims he could possibly have of saying that I was a liar that it hadn't happened, that it wasn't that big of a deal, that it was just for two seconds. I thought it would give a visual to any viewers, even viewers that didn't like me, that this had actually happened and it was fucked up and it was completely out of line on his end to do what he did. So here's Walter walking downstairs. At this point, I am currently locked in the room with the babies. We had already been arguing. I didn't want to talk. And so I went in the bedroom with them where they were sleeping, their room, and I locked the door. The drawer that he opened is where I have the keys to all of the doors in the house. And then he grabs his tool pack and heads back upstairs to our room. I don't know how long he sat in the room, but he came to the baby's room and he, and he started trying to open the door. I could hear the keys. So I got up right away and I held the lock trying to hold him from unlocking it. He overpowered me, was, un was able to unlock the door, and he opened it. And I thought that I would be safe in there because the babies were sleeping. And this was my first indication where I kind of panicked that he was being kind of illogical. And he may have been drunk because for him to bring it in where the babies were sleeping really threw me off and it made me afraid right away. He dragged me out of the room and then dragged me back into the master bedroom where we continued fighting.
That shit is hard to watch. It's hard to watch and it's hard to listen to. And so I shared a small clip of this. I thought what was necessary. I actually, this is the first time I've shared the full clip. I just realized I had the full clip. And I thought, you know what, let me share the whole thing so we don't have any issues of you cut this part out, you cut that part out. 
The camera is located in the living room, so which is right below my bedroom. So I caught some of the audio, the more loud stuff, but not all of it. But if you watch that video, you can hear that he was the aggressor, right? He Once he tell, yells at me to shut the fuck up, I react. I tell him, get out, get out, go downstairs. I grab bags. I go back upstairs. At this point, I'm angry too. And um, we start arguing a little bit more. And he warns me that if I touch so i was actually standing right here right in front of this tv right let me recreate some of this so i was here with the bags right here he's right there and his clothes are all over the bed right and so i start um i don't know what i said like get all your shit and he says if you touch my if you touch my shit i'm gonna hit you those were his exact words and i challenged him i don't believe that he would in my moment of uh like I said, anger and wanting to, you know, keep control in my own home. I said, fucking hit me then. I actually said, you're going to hit me, hit me then, con ganas. And um, he didn't. I grabbed his clothes. And the first shirt that I put in is when he hit the TV right behind me. And when he swung, he literally swung right next to my head. Like, the, that was the first. Uh, and I didn't even have time to, to react to that. Because the next thing I knew, I was pinned to my bed with him on top of me, strangling me. And then you see me run out and you see him kind of go back and forth grabbing his things. I ran to the neighbors. They helped me call the police. Um, I have some clips of when I was outside with the police. I'll show you. Hasta hoy se separaron. Sí. <coughs> ¿Qué es lo que ustedes se en contra de él? Pues levantar una denuncia y no sé si pueden dar como una orden que no pueda acercarse o regresar. Mira, las órdenes de restricción no las damos nosotros, esas son con el juzgado civil, eso es a lo civil. La, las denuncias te las podemos levantar por daño a las cosas, pero para una orden de restricción tiene que ser directamente y tu personal, juzgado civil, la vocería, uh -huh. que es donde te dan tu documento donde viene sellado y ordenado por un juez uh -huh. para que él no se te acerque a tu domicilio. El hecho de que me agredió físicamente ahí se, pone, se puede hacer una denuncia o qué pasa con eso? Pues depende cómo, cómo haya sido la, la violencia físicamente. Trae golpes. Me lo doy cuello. Pero trae. Oh, let's get out of the way. Let's get on the bed. Alright, so this 
mounting job is very much chakra. Uh, It's not gonna, it's hooked on. It's secure. So why am I going back into this, right? Why am I going this detailed and showing these videos again and, and rehashing this? Because since this happened, my abuse, everything that I lived in these videos and the weeks following after, that morning after the incident, having to lie to my kids of what happened to the TV, all of that has been completely invalidated by my abuser and his supporters for months. I was discredited. I was invalidated. I was told I'm a liar. I was told this never happened. I exaggerated. I was told I hit him first. So he was just defending himself among many things that I'm going to show you. But the reason why it's important for me to piece this video together is because this validates what I lived because you can't discredit receipts you can't discredit what happened you can't discredit the images of my injuries you can't discredit my medical report and the fact that i had to go to these links to prove that this happened to me and i was a victim at the hands of this crazy piece of shit is truly sad and it's the reason why women don't speak up it's the reason why a lot of them go back and it's the reason why a lot of them stay there because if i hadn't shared what happened i shared what happened immediately like the next day and you know why because i wanted to make sure i didn't go back because i knew that if everybody knew what had happened there was no way i could go back because i had spent months hiding a lot of things we didn't we were not doing well we had a lot of other issues that i'm sure other couples have but this was too much for me and so i shared it for my accountability and because it happened to me and there's no reason why I needed to protect him any longer because there was a lot of things that I had protected him from so that he wouldn't get hate. A lot of fucked up things he did while he was here from driving drunk and getting my car towed. He was chaos in my life. He was chaos in my life for those months. But I didn't share it with you guys because I wanted to believe in us. I wanted to believe that he had changed, that he could change. And I was afraid of all the backlash that I was going to receive because there was a lot of people waiting for us for this to happen. Maybe not for me to get assaulted, but they were waiting for me to learn my lesson because I made a huge mistake. And a lot of people told me so in the beginning and I was defensive. I wanted to prove that he could change, that he had changed and, and he hadn't, right? He actually has gotten progressively worse since our incidents in the, in the States. So as you guys heard in that clip with the, with the police, right? The police gave more attention to the broken TV than they did my physical injuries. And I had to spend two months going to the Fiscalia um, to make sure that an arrest warrant was issued and to make sure that I, a protective order was issued for me and my children. And if you think that this incident is in any way comparable to the incident that we had in the States and the aunt, like, it's just not, right? But he started, the first thing he did is try, try to discredit what had happened and justify. And first he began with a version of events that, and this was before I released the video because I didn't release it right away, right? He, been, he began with these posts um, on Instagram saying that I had hit, that no, at first it was that I was cheating on him, that I had been sending nudes to my, to my ex, Kale, you know, a, a bunch of random bullshit. When really you heard the audio, it came down to his ego and the fact that he was getting kicked out and he didn't take that well. It triggered him having his stuff put in, in garbage bags. He had shared that with me in previous fights because this wasn't the first time that I kicked him out. You guys know that. Um, but this was the first time that he snapped the way that he did after I kicked him out and which solidified. So anyway, let's begin with his version of events, right? Um, now, before I go there, I'm going to show you guys my injuries. And my injuries, the first night that I showed the pictures with the cops, um, that was about an hour or two. The cops took a little bit to get here and he was already gone by then. And so you saw that I had marks. I have, my whole chest was red. The bruises started showing up in the days following. I had bruises on both sides of my neck from his fingertips um, that you can see here. And I, I was sharing these along the way because immediately I started getting a lot of hate and that I was a liar. 
um, I saw comments of this didn't even happen. Look, the next day she posted a video and she had nothing on her, etc. I actually went and I got a medical evaluation to prove what happened to me. It was part of the process for my, you know, my report here. But in order to get a copy of it, I had to fight them to give me a copy of this report. And I did it solely for the reason that I wanted to prove to people that I was telling the truth, that this had happened to me and that, that he, he was telling people I was lying, that I was literally lying. And so I showed the video, I showed the pictures, I showed my medical report and I was still invalidated to this day for months that it didn't happen. And that if it did happen, it was my fault because I supposedly hit him first, which again, if you listen to that audio, that doesn't back up that version of events. Where are the marks on his face? Why why was that not introduced right away? So first, before I get into everything, I need to show you guys a timeline of how he began to discredit what I had gone through in these previous posts and videos that I've shared with you guys. Just clear the air about for real. Just and get it over with. After I completely just shut out from all of this because it's too much. Too much emotion, too much pain, too much fucking stress, dude. I'm fucking over it. I moved here to be with my kids. Probably never gonna see them again. It's fucked me up. We got in a stupid argument. It was about only fans. Because I asked her if she thought she was gonna post more explicit stuff. And she just went off rambling. It's my body, I can do whatever the fuck I want, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, well, you can't really do what you want because of your boyfriend, you know, you got a, you got a partner. I can do whatever the fuck I want. She deliberately said, I don't give a fuck how you feel, I'm going to do it regardless. I'm going to do what I feel like I need to do. That's kind of when I was like, all right, you know what, well, I can't be with a person like you because I don't condone that. Like, I, I would fucking don't like that my girl was doing that period. I, to, I, I brought it up to her, I told her we could do some sexy pictures, you know, those things could be kidding pictures, shit like that. Because I know, like, she would feel powerful, she would feel sexy, but she wanted to take it too far. I don't know what the fuck she's posting on there. I haven't known for a long time. And it just kind of broke my heart and was killing me inside her. Anyway, well, that day I agreed to leave and I said I was going to get the fuck out of there. But I was like, you know what? I was watching the Canelo fight. I had a couple beers. I don't want to drive. I don't want to drive like this. I got nowhere to go. I'll leave tomorrow. She lost her shit and started throwing my shit around, grabbing my shit, throwing it in bags, and you're gonna fucking get the fuck out right now. Yeah, it's just going off. I kept telling her, just leave my stuff alone, please. Like, I already agreed to leave. I'll leave right now, but just quit throwing my shit around. She's fucking throwing everything on my hat, shoes, and just pissing me off. And I kept telling her, stop, you're gonna piss me off. Stop, you're gonna piss me off. So I got upset. Finally, I got mad, and I punched the TV. I didn't hit her. I punched the TV. As I punched the TV, she got really upset and started coming at me and swinging on me and hitting me. And when I broke the TV, she got really upset and started coming at me, swinging on me. And in the heat of the moment, I didn't think anything through. It was just caught up in the moment, I guess. And I did put my hand on her throat and I put her on the bed and I like said some things and told her she couldn't fucking hit me, like get the fuck off me, whatever. But my hand was on her throat for like literally two seconds honestly five seconds at the most and then i felt like shit like i broke my own heart doing that to her because i saw the fear in her eyes like she was scared and i felt so fucking broken inside like god damn i just hurt the woman i love and i even told her i was so sorry i told her i was sorry and i love you and i was gonna leave we both fucked up i just fucked up that i'm the only one that ever gets dragged this was the first video that I saw with this narrative that I had hit him first and that it's fucked up and I'm the only one getting blamed for the situation and blah, blah, blah. And it's the first, I don't even know if I can call this accountability, but where he does admit that he, he did that to me. And he said it might be two seconds or five seconds. And listen, when you are in those situations, it feels like eternity. When you have 300 pounds of weight on your throat and you are locked in eyes in eye contact with the person doing this to you it feels like you're gonna fucking die okay it was you don't get to choose how i felt in that moment on this bed and invalidate that because it was just for a few seconds and i had the reason this is why i did it Whew, this triggers me very much as you can see 
Now, he starts telling people that I hate him first. So I start getting flooded with hate in my DMs on my posts that it's my fault. That I'm crazy. I start getting referred to as Amber Heard. There's tons of just shit going on. He jumps on TikTok. Mind you, he hadn't really been on TikTok prior to this. His videos start going viral because everyone is just invested in this cheese man. Just like when Julia was making videos about me. Everyone's invested in giving him views. And I just start seeing this spiral right where i'm watching the person that just strangled me get the support of thousands and i'm getting the hate of thousands because of this content right and so while he's telling some people that it's because i hit him first he's then telling some people via dms that it's because i was taunting him taunting somebody and swinging on somebody first are two very different things so it was very conflicting the version of events that he was giving to deflect the actual responsibility of what he had done because what he did is fucking disgusting and there's no excuse for it at all even if i've gone into this on you know on, on videos and content and, and lives before that even giving him the benefit of the doubt that i had swung on you first it still doesn't justify and i locked myself in the room first Okay. I tried to get away. I didn't want to talk. I kept shutting down. And he knows that. He knows that he pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed for me to talk. And when he finally said, shut the fuck up, I said, well, then get the fuck out. And we start arguing, right? I also was feeling cornered in my own home. And so I reacted verbally, not physically, not physically. When he threw the first punch at the TV, he becomes the physical aggressor first. So even if I had swung back, I would be in my very right and that would actually be called self-defense, but I didn't. And I wish every day that I, that I had so that I could tell this story more bravely and say, yeah, I fucking swung on him, fuck him. No, I didn't, I didn't even have time, right? In his version of events, he says, she got really upset after I punched the TV. There was no time for me to get upset. If you heard the audio of, this, of the cameras, it went bam and then scuffles. <laughs> and what time did I have to get angry? I didn't have time to react, right? So the aggressor in this situation was very much him. I don't care if I was yelling. I don't care if I told you to get the fuck out. I don't care if supposedly I was throwing his shit around, which I wasn't. I literally grabbed his stuff and was putting it in the bag. And that is what he classified as being taunted and throwing shit around. So again, which is it? Did I swing on you first or is it because I was taunting you? This shit doesn't add up. And there's going to be a lot of discrepancies in his post, which, which is why I'm finally piecing it together because he has told so many lies to discredit what I went through. And it stops today. So next slide. Your account of added GRC. What's your favorite position? I was going to write when I choke you during the nasty, but that's a little too far. That's <laughs> ah, fucking alpha. I'm a dick, huh? Certificate medical, the little more. Como la orco, como estarás pendeja y tú diez más a la verga. I did not joke. No. Pues y dije, no, pues sí me pasé de verga, you know. Y le dije, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry, I love you, but I'm gone. Like, I'm leaving. And those were like the last words I said. I'm, I'm leaving, you know. Um, so social media becomes his tool to continue abusing me. And, you know, from making jokes about what happened to denying it, to admitting it, to saying sorry, to then back to making fun of me, to entertaining all these questions about me, he begins to grow a platform on TikTok off of what's happened between us, right? And I built my platform off of sharing our experiences as well. My experiences with him, my experiences with deportation, etc. But there's a very big difference in sharing your experiences what you're going through what you're struggling with and abusing someone in the process of doing so so when i share the terrible things that you've done what this man had done i'm sharing things that happened when you are going on social media and mocking me and ridiculing me and dissecting me sexually and talking about my body and talking about my children talking about my mother my stepfather my sister that is no longer just you voicing your, you know, that is you literally attacking me through social media. That is you abusing me through social media. And if you remember how this video started, it was with his first video of, I don't want to affect her. I know that social media feeds my children. I don't want her to lose followers. 
and slowly but surely as he gained followers as he gained more attention and he liked it as he gained support financially he began to go into anything of annie that was asked people were asking about my our sex life they were asking about my body they were asking if i'm happy with my bbl he's sharing my insecurities he's saying um you know i'm a dead fish in bed so many things were sent to me it would take me days to put everything together and show you guys. I have, you know, some of them, um, but it becomes my worst nightmare, honestly. And this is still while he was in PB. I have a lot of footage where I'm seeing the comment section, um, go pick up the kids from school, fuck that, go fight for them, do this, start Starbucks raffles. You should go to every Starbucks store on release day so you run into her like these are people literally i recognize some of the usernames and they were the same usernames that used to troll me and him together when we were still together so people that had hated me and trolled me now went and they turned into his supporters and they were asking all sorts of questions about me and he was answering every single one about my money about my motherhood and he manipulated so much he lied so much and it turned into an attack it turned into what he said he wasn't going to do. I don't want to affect her. I don't want to dismantle her. That's exactly what he started doing. I couldn't understand why, except for the fact that, the, that every time I noticed a pattern behind the scenes, right? When he would be texting me and um, trying to communicate with me and I would block him. Diarrhea out the mouth for three, four days on social media. And these posts were back to back to back. Every day I was waking up to something new. And... You might have the opinion that I opened the door to that because I shared it on social media. So yes, granted, he was in his every right to, I guess, respond and create content back if he wished to do so. But the content that was created was so hateful. It was so crippling to me emotionally because I was already in a really bad state of mind. I was already fucking crushed. He talks about, you know, I knew I fucked up. I saw the look in her face. He knows if he was honest with himself when everyone when there's no one watching that he knows he broke me in that moment on my bed and so that and the behavior that and followed for those few months after was was just like I, I couldn't I, I was in such a bad shape so you guys know I took off to playa why did I take off to playa because I was afraid of him I was afraid he would go pick up the kids from school this is somebody that knew my every move and began exposing it online um some of the videos I didn't save because um I didn't know I would be doing this and his TikTok account was recently banned but they were up up until just a few days ago he was exposing my pin number he exposed supposedly how much money I had. He was talking about how much money I was making. He was talking about GRC. He was talking about things he had no knowledge of. He had never even seen like a receipt for GRC. And he started telling people, yes, yeah, she's scamming people. I don't agree with how much money she was keeping. She was doing this. She was doing that. He turned into my number one hater over like it was crazy to see. And I just kept thinking, you know, does he not realize what he just said in the, the, the first clip of this video? You know, I realized that all of this feeds my children. Well, he started taking directly from his children. All those people that were entering his raffle in those first few days, some of them were people that used to enter my raffles that were now entering his. Um, some of those people were the, the, the trolls that had spent so much time trying to fuck with me and him. And, you know, he was here with me when we were literally during the hate campaign talking about sending all of our kids back to the states because we were all afraid for our safety including him right so he saw how it affected me he started doxing me he started releasing my kids first and last names he started sharing the community that i live in the name he started uh dropping you guys didn't know this but when he was on TikTok uh, showing you guys good restaurants to eat in those first few weeks, he was going to restaurants near my house that were literally minutes from my children's school. I didn't share any of this and I'm not going to share those videos because I'm not trying to show you guys or share with a bunch of strangers where my children go to school. But he was taunting me in those first few weeks on social media and even here. And that is why I took off to Playa. I didn't tell anybody, I didn't have a plan. I just picked up my kids and I took off because I started watching him spiral on social media and I could not believe what was happening. I could not believe that he was exposing me. And when I say exposing, I don't mean he's bringing shit light to the truth. He was literally putting me out for people to attack me, for my safety to be compromised, for people to come y levantarme aquí. Like he literally was telling people what my pin number was. 
it was and if anybody in pb was watching it all they had to do was pull up to the starbucks and my isda or wherever i was going take my take my purse and swipe my card and they had my pin number so many things that were happening that were putting me in a direct line of fire an x on my back because i wouldn't answer his phone calls and so that's why i left to playa and you know that fed his idea that i was cheating with kale and this and that and i just i just spent <laughs> weeks you know seeing this type of content thrown out there and once you know i i kept i stood my ground i i didn't back down and say oh i lied like he ex i don't know maybe he wanted me to i believe he he knew he knew that he knew so much about my life the deepest parts of my of my heart of my soul of my past and that he had the power to break me and he did right you guys know he brought my family into it he brought my mother he brought my stepfather, he brought my sister, he brought my other, the other father of my children, he brought um, my children into it. He, any bit of me that he knew, he threw on social media. And that was, the betrayal in that was almost as bad as the DV to me because I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that I could open my home to him after everything that had happened and allow him, you know, into my safe place. And not only did he make this safe place not feel safe, he made PB not feel safe for me. And you guys know that this is my, this was my safe place. After deportation, I came here, I rebuilt, I put new roots and I was free. I was happy. I was healing from all of this shit that I had left back home. And the minute he arrived and me or the kids or your kid that you left in the states yeah, yeah, that's the real scam shut up bitch why the fuck you worried about my daughter in the states sabrina already got money for me don't believe me ask her who's even tripping about what the fuck you're doing i'm not trying to knock your hustle there's people that won't go to you because they don't like you there's people that won't come to me because they don't like me good great there's money for everybody the fuck anybody could do whatever the fuck they want to do and make money there's so many people in the same fucking businesses. But you're Annie and I'm trying to knock you. And you got to keep this narrative alive. I don't give a fuck about you or anything you do. If I never have to see you again, better for me. Like, you talk a bunch of shit. No one's trying to knock you. No one is against you. You're fucking psycho, bro. You got some screws loose. Hold on, guys. I'm looking for some screws to send to Anna so she can put them back in her fucking head. Jesus Christ, I can't find any. Bro, you're delusional. You're fucking delusional. You're over there sucking cock instead of taking care of your dicks and you feel good about yourself. You're stupid. You look bad. You look worse than I do when I cheated on you when you were pregnant. <laughs> wow, the tables have turned. Who's the dirt bag this? If you can watch that video and the way he smacks the phone and still believe that I was the aggressor in this relationship, you're in denial, okay? That video was so unsettling to me when I saw him smack. And this is not the only one. I have one from literally two days ago where he does the same shit. Talking to me through the phone and smacks the phone. He displays such a disregard for women in the way that he speaks his through his content. And I was floored when women were still supporting him after this is the type of content he was putting out there. If you can look at that as somebody who has been through DV... If you've experienced TV, if your sister has, if your mother has, and that doesn't trigger you, I don't know. I, I just don't understand. Second of all, this, I have so much to say about a small part of this video. The whole, there's money for everybody. It reminds me of uh, PJs. El sol sale para todos. But before I say that, I'm going to make sure I dissect everything you were doing and how much money you were bringing in and how I don't agree with this and I don't agree with that. And you're fucking scamming because you make a lot of money. But hay dinero para todos. El sol sale para todos. Do you, I do me. He was really like gaslighting me into making me think I was psycho. No one's out to get you. No one's after you. No one gives a fuck about you. But every single day there was six or seven videos made with this type of content, right? From my pin number to she's scamming. She's she's a fucking scammer. She's a fucking scammer and she's a fucking scammer. And she was doing this and she was making this much money and her besties are the next victims. I mean, so much garbage, right? And so, yes, I replied to some of it through my Instagram stories. Um, I wanted to piece all of that together in one video because it kind of lays everything out better. Um, 
Next slide. My fear about her getting her U visa is that my kids are gonna go to the States. I have no rights over them over there. Did I shoot myself in the foot? Yes, I did. But I never in my life thought she was gonna fabricate a story and get a U visa, especially a con artist like her. So now he starts attacking my U visa, right? And I don't know if people that watch him are genuinely uneducated or just it's fun to believe what he says, but let's talk about my U visa. My U visa has nothing to do with Walter, okay? So for him to say, I had no idea she was going to fabricate a story. And he starts painting this picture that I'm using what happened here for a U visa, okay? If you don't know what a U visa is, it's a visa for victims that have um, been through a qualifying crime inside of the US and reported it to law enforcement and cooperated in the pr prosecution of said crime, okay? I have an attorney uh, that is working my case, that has reviewed my case thoroughly, that has evidence of my case and has presented my case to the courts. If I had fabricated a story for my U visa, I'm pretty sure that an attorney would be able to see and would be able to decline my case. Now, if you guys re forgot this small part of my story that my case is being handled pro bono by an attorney that found me on TikTok, okay? So I really doubt that an attorney would take on a fabricated story for free for fun, okay? And so he starts trying to twist my my shit about my U visa that I'm using, I've lied, I lied about DV in the US, I'm lying now, I'm a con artist, I'm manipulating, I'm using this, I'm using that. And you know what the root of it is? Of this, what he mentioned in this video, his fear that when we return to the US, he has no access to them. And he has no access to them anyway, but he believes that, or at the moment believed, that because we're in Mexico, although he relinquished his rights in the US, it doesn't apply in Mexico. And here he has some type of right and he he had people um, in his ear telling him to fight for custody and yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that because here they're my kids and they don't have the same name as over there and blah, 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 blah. And so he starts also attacking my U visa, right? And one of these previous clips, or, you know, he smacked the phone. He said, I don't give a fuck what you do, this and that. But for not giving a fuck about what I do, he was balls deep in everything that I was doing and attacking and sending people to attack anything I was doing. So people started commenting very hateful things, sending me DMs. I'm going to reach out to immigration, going to make sure you don't get your U visa. You're never going to get a fucking U visa. Now you're lying about this. You made up this whole thing just to get your U visa. Things that didn't make any sense, but people were running with it. And if you watch this whole video, he's already admitted this happened. I have evidence this happened. But this has nothing to do with my U visa. My U visa is, has in no way, shape, or form connection to Walter. But he has now painted it as I'm using him. Just like, you know, uh, I'm lying on him to get some type of benefit. Just like I lied about him in the States, blah, blah, blah. Next slide. I love being with my kids. You don't, Annie. Your kids say anything to you, you're in a bad mood. You're fucking like, oh my god. You guys heard her screaming at the kids. Get off when she's on live. She's on live for hours at a time. Who's watching the kids? Her oldest daughter? Pobrecita, bro. Her oldest daughter is going to resent her. And this is just the last five months that I spent with her oldest daughter. The way she would say some things. It's like... She loves you. She really loves you, Anna, but you're really fucking with her heart. You're really fucking her up. And that's real. Karma, amigo, have faith. Um, I guess I'm just trying to, I'm trying to avoid her karma for her, if that makes sense. Like I want her to come to a, the realization these lives and videos start getting more and more personal and he starts giving these trolls an inside look to my home, to my family, to my children, to my motherhood. And every time he would speak on my, my older children, it was so triggering for me um, to hear him like talking shit about the fact that I was online for so long and she's yelling at the kids and this and that is an inaccurate representation of what was going on in my home. But it made me sad because that was me providing for my kids. When I'm spending hours on my lives, hours on my raffles, that's generating money. I can't do both things at once. I can't 
be the provider and the caretaker. And then when he threw in my oldest daughter that way, oh, she's getting fucked up because she's babysitting. Listen, none of my children are babies, okay? My youngest daughter is five turning six. So when I'm on live and I'm working, my children are outside playing or they're downstairs doing their thing. My oldest daughter is in her room playing. And not that I have to uh, like explain any of that, but he started manipulating so many things that he saw in my home and then lying. Because if you caught what he said, I spent five months with her. Do you guys remember that my oldest children were in Arizona for the entire summer? And they literally were here for three weeks before he got the boot, okay? And prior to that, he went on a few trips with us before they went to Arizona. So he spent very limited time with my older children. And he began to talk about them. He began to talk shit about them. I need to look through my phone, but there was one of one of the videos that really fucking made me angry when he was talking about Andre, right? I shared a screenshot where my son expressed he was uncomfortable around him alone after he broke his arm. Uh, he was being a dick to him and Andre texted me and he expressed to me he wasn't comfortable with him alone, okay? And so he came to defend himself and you know what he started doing? He started talking shit about my son. He started telling people that, um, he was just really fucking sensitive and he needs to grow up and I just baby him. Mind you, he had literally just gone through a very traumatic event. Um, so yes, I was I was babying my son. I was giving him love. I was letting I was being sensitive to his needs, emotional and physical. Anyway, I'll have to look and see if I have that video. But um the these are what these lives turned into is sharing very intimate information about me my life, my home, my children. You guys know I share very limited content about my kids, especially when we went through the hate campaign, right? So he was now on social media with the same people that had been attacking me through Julia's campaign, giving them an inside look to my home, my kids, my intimacy, everything. And I can't tell you how that felt, honestly. Like it was such a betrayal. It was so crippling because I had no control over it. I couldn't make him stop. There was nothing I could do to make him stop. And it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And you guys know, I'm not going to share everything because it would take us forever. But there was a very, um, you know, sensitive information divulged to the internet about my family. And family mm -hmm. members of my family that had nothing to do with any of this. Um, Bryce was dragged into it. You guys, I shared a, a snippet earlier where his supporters were going out and messaging Bryce about his his narrative that she's over there with you know some dude that shoots porn and the kids aren't in school and they're around a child molester and i just need you to be aware people were if you see the comments in this video we need to report her to the irs we need to report her to cps we need to do this we need to do that literally fueling people to come for me to come for the dearest parts of me my children my income my platforms my family and it all derived from these lives, from these videos. I don't know if he realized what he was doing, okay? He's not the smartest, the, he's not smart, okay? He's very emotionally unintelligent. And um, my frustration came from like, bro, all of these things that you're doing are affecting your our babies, you know? And it solidified the decision I had made that it, those months made me feel even more so that I needed to protect them from him because he was completely unhinged. And I'm gonna show you how it just got worse and worse and worse and worse progressively. Um, I shared a lot of receipts on my Instagram. If you guys remember, um, there was a DV incident that he left unresolved in the States with his ex-wife, where it was the exact same pattern, right? He punched a um, fire extinguisher on the wall and then he assaulted her. It was like a mirror of what happened here, right? He breaks the TV and then assaults me. And I shared that on social media and, and I wouldn't have shared it, but I was literally trying to stay afloat. You know, I was very, I wanted to be believed. I wanted to be validated. I wanted, I couldn't believe how many women were attacking me. I couldn't believe the supporters that once supported me that were now on his, you know, platforms talking shit about me and she's this and she's that. And yeah, I saw through her after the DV like it hurt me it hurt me being invalidated by him by everybody else on social media it made me question myself it made me wonder am i the problem it really made me think did i do i not remember things correctly did i fucking hit him like it made me crazy it made me crazy 
um watching this shit and it was inevitable because there were so many people involved just like he mentions in a few of these videos like oh people were sending me shit people sent me shit every fucking day every day and it was the indirect communication from our followers and some of them with good intentions some of them with shitty intentions but it is what it became just like i'm sure this video will get back to him and so anyway um where does that leave us right where did we end things so next slide how it went down so for her to bring up my ex-wife is her reaching it's her going out of her ways because me and my ex-wife had a fallout due to the fact that i spoke and talked about that certain situation with anna send you some change but i like that oh yeah buy a carrot <laughs> to show the pattern in his behavior because at this point it had turned into who's telling the truth? Am I lying or is he lying? Am I the narcissist? Is he the narcissist? Am I the abuser? Is he the abuser? Okay, it got really messy. And so I have receipts for everything. You guys know that I have a file for everybody on my hard drive, okay? Because we have gone to court for so many years that I have exhibits. I I have everything, okay? So I have this police report. I also have the witness statement that was written by somebody that witnessed him assaulting her. Okay, so what is the difference between his um, demeanor towards his ex-wife and me? That his ex-wife didn't hold him legally accountable. And I did. So this happened, he was charged and he fled, right? And so he never had to go to court. She never testified against him from what I've learned and the way that he's expressed himself is that although charges were filed, which I don't think they were filed because she pushed it, right? And the state of Utah, regardless of whether the victim wants to file charges, the state will file charges. And so if you read through the police report, she declined to give a um, witness statement, but they filed charges anyway. They have the witness statement from the other person that was there and they charged him for it. But the wife never really went against him. They ended up getting back together. Um, I don't know what happened with them ultimately. You guys know that he has tried to blame me for their divorce as well, but I would beg to differ because when this happened, me and him weren't even speaking. This was after he terminated his rights. I had left them alone. He left me alone. And so whatever happened between them and their domestic violence incidents had nothing to do with me. However, he went on to tell you guys that it was also my fault that I had caused drama between them and I'm the reason that they got divorced, which is again, <laughs> have nothing to do with me but everything turned into my fault the fact he was here with no job with nowhere to sleep with no income the fact he got um he lost his wife the fact he signed away his kids everything has become my fault including shit like this that i have nothing i wasn't even talking to him at that point um but i think it's um interesting to point out how he's so protective of her and you know, don't give her drama, don't do this because she never held him accountable. I am the only woman in his life that has ever held him accountable, which is why he hates me the way that he does. His mother has never held him accountable. Sabrina never held him accountable. Karina never held him accountable. I did. I did even from across the border, right? When I went and I seized his assets, when I continued to pursue child support, when I continued to take him to court, when I um, pressed charges here and every time I held him accountable. To him, it's an attack. To him, he's a victim when he's being held accountable because nobody else does it. So I'm the one that causes the waves in his life. And so to everybody around him, he manages to convince them that I'm the crazy one and I'm just out to ruin his life and I'm just out to fucking screw him and everything is my fault and I'm crazy and this and I'm a liar on top of everything. I just make up this shit. But how can you, how can you not see the pattern in this police report where it is exactly the same scenario that happened here. And I believe his relationship with Karina was very volatile. There was a lot of domestic in that relationship, domestic violence. He was hitting her and she was hitting him, okay? He confided in me with a lot of details about his marriage with Karina. And from what he's told me is he also told me that she was the aggressor, that she was constantly hitting him, that she was constantly spitting in his face, throwing pots at his pans. And when this incident happened, he finally snapped on her. And that was his justification. And now that I've, lo now that I've lived it, I now question whether she was actually the aggressor. But I don't know. I don't know. It's not my business. I don't care. All I know is I brought this in to show that pattern of his behavior. He drinks. He gets drunk. 
he hits something and then he assaults the woman and it gets progressively worse because if you remember the first police report that I showed you from our first incident, he just put, he punched the wall and broke the frame and he left. He did not physically assault me. In this police report with Karina, he punched the uh, fire extinguisher and then he pushed her or punched her. I don't know one of the two, there's been conflicting stories, but the police report says he pushed her. He pushed her down. And then with me, he broke the TV and then he strangled me. Okay, so every incident of domestic violence has gotten a little bit worse. Do you guys see that? I see it. I don't think he sees it and he won't acknowledge it. But from the first, second, and third of the documented incidents, it has progressed a little bit worse. Okay, which is why I refuse to put myself around him anymore. Because next time, he could hold me down for a little bit longer. When he loses control like that, he has no idea how much damage he's going to do. When he had me pinned on this bed, there was no way for him to know whether he was holding on for too long or were he, or were, or whether he was crushing me with too much force because he had lost control. He loses control every time he's drunk and upset or whatever. And one of these days, he's going to hurt somebody seriously. Each incident is going to keep getting worse because he's not held accountable. And so he's comfortable in doing it. He's comfortable and posting about it, he's comfortable continuing the abuse online. He's comfortable making excuses. And the next woman that he comes across, I worry he will seriously hurt her. Because with me... Uh, I don't think I've done that. If I have or if you feel like I have, I'm sorry. I do not condone that. If there was a real victim of sexual abuse, like... I feel bad for them. That's not okay by any way, shape, or form. Um, the, the post she shared where it says, do you think it was her dad or her stepdad? I, I knew it was her right off the bat <laughs> because it has a profile that had two follow, or it, had, it was following two people, me and Julia, and fucking, it had no followers and no nothing else, no pictures, no nothing, just like a profile picture, but nothing else. And they, they were, like, talking shit to me, uh, trolling me. So I trolled back. And I was like, so you did, so do you think it was her dad or her stepdad? Um, I didn't try to mock him, but I, I had a feeling it was her. Um, so if it came off that way, I'm sorry. So to clarify, I don't know why he thought this would be a good excuse. that Oh, I knew it was her because it wasn't me. If I wanted to speak to you, if I wanted to talk shit to him, if I wanted to engage, I would have engaged through text message or whatever the fuck. When I saw this post of his on Instagram, I was so disgusted. I was so triggered. There's a lot of things that Walter doesn't know about me and one of them is that I did actually go through sexual abuse as a child. No, it was not at the hands of my parents. But this post really put me in a bad place and it was definitely a mockery to those of us that have been abused sexually by our parents. You guys know that he put out this information about my stepdad that he has, or that he had some charges back in, I don't even know fucking when, of child abuse. And I've already gone into that. I've shared what I'm going to share on that. This was not a topic that he had any right to share with the internet. It's something very very painful that's part of my family and he had no right to speak on it it was completely irrelevant to my situation with him but it was his way to deflect the attention from what he had done to me right he started exposing things about me my family my body and mocking me in every way shape and form he started body shaming me he started i mean anything you could think of i've showed you a few posts that's just a handful of them there were hundreds hundreds of them and this particular post was a mockery to anybody that has gone through sexual abuse i had hundreds of my followers messaging me that they were triggered that they had to seek help that they could not watch his content and i could not fathom how he was still receiving support even if you don't like me even if you hate me even if you're one of my trolls i don't understand how somebody that is putting out this type of content had any type of support to continue. And I believe the only reason why he had the support is because supporting him meant meeting their goal of hurting me. 
and it did very much hurt me it put me in a very bad place so after this post i did come out and i addressed it and i did say i do have a history of sexual abuse and when i came out with that all of a sudden that was a lie too no she fucking wasn't that's just her way to spin it the i mean you should have seen <laughs> Uh, going back through these receipts is kind of triggering, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this topic. But it went from mocking me to putting his foot in his mouth when I came out and said, yes, this actually happened to me. I'm, I'm not going to go into the details of it. That's not something I'm probably ever going to share on social media because of people like him. But this this post was... I still can't really... So not only did we go from invalidating what I had experience as a domestic violence victim with him to now I had hundreds of people invalidating my sexual abuse as a child that I briefly shared after this post. So anything that could ever paint me in the light of a victim was a lie because there's no way that Annie could be a victim because she's a fucking scammer. She did this, she did that, she's going here, she's going there. So she's, they're all fucking lies. That's how I began to feel. That is the message that social media was giving to me, that everything I was saying was a lie and it was being invalidated by this man through these posts. And I am frustrated. I was frustrated. I am still frustrated because anytime I go into these topics that are very vulnerable for me, that help me relate to my audience, that makes it so there's hundreds of women that come to me and tell me I'm inspired by this. I was able to leave because of this. You gave me a voice in my own situation. That's why I share these things. And every time I do, I'm flooded with, oh, that's not true because she lied. She lied to put him in jail. So she lies about everything. And we've already gone into that. We made a video together. I've addressed it multiple times. Yes, I lied to put him in jail. I was not in a good place. I was completely off my rocker. And I did things that I shouldn't have done, right? And that, from that incident, the fact that I took accountability for that has been used against me in every situation where I am a victim. And yes, I lied once to the courts. I lied to the police department and I said that he violated his protective order and he did it so that he would go to jail. I did that and I stand behind it. And that's very different than any of the shit he's done, okay? I went to his mother. I took accountability to his mother. I apologized to his mother. I went to the courts. I admitted that I lied, which turned into me being charged for it, being held accountable. I have made peace with that part of my past. I have been held accountable. I have admitted that I did it. And I have admitted to him, to the world, to his mama, to the state of Utah. And that gets to stay there. But that does not invalidate every time something happens to me as a lie, because it's it's such a different, right? He's made it to to appear that, oh, she lied about DV back there. It was a fake DV. She's lying now to discredit everything and to project everything onto me. To take the focus of what he did onto everything else that's bad about me, shameful of me, things that I don't even have control over. I am not responsible for what my stepdad did before he came into my life. I'm not even responsible for the fact that that's the step that that was given to me. And social media hung me for it. <laughs> and they demanded answers. And how could you do this? And how could you do that? These are things that I will never discuss openly with a bunch of people that are out to attack me because they are committed to misunderstanding me. And he knew when he put that out there, that's probably the lowest of the lowest. And, and that was his last card to play. And that's why I'm where I'm at now, because I know that he has done everything that he could possibly do to hurt me, to humiliate me, to shame me, to expose me. And he has nothing left because he has not been in my life for five to six months now. And the only thing he can do is keep repeating these lies that I am now clearing up and that I'm now showing where they stem from. And it's a narcissist that is deflecting the attention from what he did onto his victim, anything that she's done wrong, anything that she said wrong, anything that she could possibly do wrong and made it my fault because he cannot be accountable for his abuse. And I am gonna make a few comments about the situation with Tim. Um, I don't have the video that he made on TikTok because I didn't save it and his account got banned a few days ago, but you guys know which video I'm talking about. He made this video where he introduced my stepdad his charges, his mugshot, and said, I'm a terrible mother that I let my children be cared for by a child molester, okay? So when all of this came out in our court hearing, Walter himself was aware of this person in my life and in our children's life, and he still terminated his rights. 
He still dealt with Tim himself directly for years. He met up with him, he spoke to him, and he received help from him. Tim insured his children for the entire time that they were in the States. Tim lent Walter money. Tim paid for our children to go visit Walter. Tim facilitated Walter sending the kids stuff and me sending the kids up there. Tim was never alone with our children ever. Tim never lived with me. He painted it that I had this person who was a risk to our children caring for them and exposing them and risking them. And if that was the actual truth, he would have never signed away his rights. And why did he deal with him? I have clips of, you guys can go watch them in the YouTube videos, you probably missed it, where he talks about meeting up with Tim to pay. You left us hanging on so much. I I sent you the money. No, you didn't. Yes, it was like You never paid later. their COVID test. You didn't pay Tim the money back. You I left met up with Tim and paid him fucking money. <laughs> You paid him a portion of it. Yeah, and then I, like... To this day, you've never paid it back. Paid him back money. Um, he actually mentioned, right, when he was here, supposedly he flew the, the kids down and this and that, and he said he made all these comments about Annie and her OnlyFans, and you knew all these things about Tim, and you were also involved with him, and you had a relationship with him, and you had report with him, and you received help from him. So for you to turn around and manipulate that information, the, the little bit of information that you know social media will react to is, I can't, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it because Tim, regardless of what you think of him, you don't know him, you don't know his charges, you don't know the history, you don't need to. I know a lot of you don't care to because those charges exist. I'm not, I don't care, okay? What I care is what I went through, what he was to me in my life, that I was raised by him, okay? Imagine being raised by a parent and you one day find out that this parent did something very fucking horrible. Whatever it was, whether they murdered someone or they... And do you think that that makes you stop loving that parent overnight because they did something terrible before they were a part of your life? No, it doesn't. So I struggled deeply with severing my relationship with the man that raised me. And Walter knows, you guys all know I have daddy issues. And if I had him terribly then, I have him even worse now because now I have stepdaddy issues too that I'm still sorting through. But I could not believe that Walter used him the way that he did to hurt me, knowing that he has received direct help from Tim and that his children have received direct help from Tim, that they were never in Tim's actual care that they were never in any way, shape or form at risk. But he told social media, I was a piece of shit mom for allowing my children around a child molester and the internet ran with it. And they ran to my other baby daddy and they wanted answers and I'm just gonna leave it at that. But the fact that was used to embarrass me, humiliate me and expose me to social media, to expose my family, when that has nothing to do with our children and he knows it otherwise, he wouldn't have had an issue with that person being around his children for as long as he was after he learned about his past. And that's that. All right, so where does that leave us today, right? We've gone through a lot of bullshit in the last five, six months. And recently, all of this got brought, brought back to social media in the last week, which is why I'm making this video. And I'm going to show you what's been ensuing since, kind of give you guys a, a recap of this last week. And where we stand and why I am so headstrong on my decision to not allow this man back into our lives. After everything, after like two to three months of this bullshit that you guys saw from the content, the TikToks, things seemed to die down, right? He went back to Michoacan, I came back to PV. Um, I went on with my life, he went on with his, and that was it. Right, I began to try to heal. I've been going to the gym. I've been going to therapy. Um, I'm still working on finishing the build of our home. Um, I took a few trips with my kids. I got to see my family. Um, it's been peaceful since that man left our life, okay? Um, I have deflected any attempts of him to contact me or the children. I have him blocked and Recently on Axel's birthday on February 6th, he called me 
Now, how did he call you if you haven't blocked on everything? Listen, I have a lot of devices and I have a lot of phone numbers, shit like that. So he manages to weasel his way in somehow. In the beginning, I blocked him on my US number, then he would call me on my Mexican number. I blocked him on WhatsApp, then he would message me on iMessage. Um, so I had him blocked on WhatsApp on my US line, but somehow I didn't block him on iMessage because we never used iMessage. I don't fucking know. And he calls me, he FaceTimes me. A FaceTime call came through at 8 p.m. at night on Axel's birthday. And he called twice. I didn't answer either call. A part of me thought about it, but the other part of me truly, I just don't trust him anymore. After everything that happened online and how he just tried to expose and, you know, dismantle me in any way, shape, or form, I don't even trust to answer the phone without thinking that he's recording it just to post or... I don't know. I just didn't want to give him any insight into my life. You know, like I said, he can speak on everything he wants to about my past. He doesn't know me anymore. He hasn't been in my life for five, six months. He can speak on what you saw while he was here, but you don't know the new me. You don't know how I move anymore. You don't know how, how we are. You don't know anything about my life anymore. And I want to keep it that way because I'm protecting me and my baby. So when that call came through, although it was Axel's birthday, you guys know I made a couple videos talking about it and I was triggered and a part of me was angry. Like, how dare you even try to fucking call, first of all. And then a part of me was like, maybe he was, um, that one went down, maybe I should have given him a shot. I don't know. I, I wasn't sure, right? If I made the right decision to not answer. But now I'm fucking sure because this man is in the same place, if not actually worse than he was when we first split up. And so I didn't answer, right? I didn't want him. I thought he's probably recording. We haven't had any communication. Like I said, I stuck to what I said. And when I said, I will never grace this man with my presence ever again. He will never have access to me again. The door is shut. You guys know that I have left the door open and closed, open and closed for many years. But what happened on this bed was enough for it changed me. It changed me completely. You wouldn't understand it unless you lived it. And I know that a lot of outsiders looking in are like, whoa, how did she do this? But now she can't do that. Like, listen, I just can't now. I just can't. Okay. I am in a different place and I want to maintain my peace. Speaking to him triggers me. Hearing his name triggers me. Seeing his name triggers me. I'm not in any way, I'm not okay. And they're not okay if I'm not okay. Okay. Those first few months, I was in really, really bad shape and it took me a lot to get myself out. So I have made a decision to shut the door and I will not communicate with him. He has made several attempts. You guys saw that he has tagged me on social media. He's tried to text me. He's sent, he's made videos for me, all of that shit, but I have not responded. I have not engaged. And that wasn't any difference on my son's birthday because I knew if I answered, we were going to argue, it'll probably be on TikTok. And I'm also not going to trigger my son because that's going to make him ask, when can I see you, dad? Why did you leave? All of this. And I don't trust his energy to be able to not deflect the current energy he has to my son. Okay, meaning he will talk shit about me to my son. He will tell his my son, it's your mom's fault. You better ask her this and that. You know what? My kids are still going through it. I haven't spoken on how they're coping and I won't be doing that. Just know that I've been taking care of them and we're trying to work through this together. And my son receiving a phone call from him out of the blue on his birthday after not seeing him and talking to him for months is not healthy for him. Okay. If that was ever to happen, an adult conversation would need to be had with me and him as adults first. Because in order to have access to my children, you will have to go through me. And you don't respect me. You don't, you're actually still attacking me and abusing me. So I can't allow you access to my son through the same door that you're abusing me, right? That is my mindset. So when that happened, um, I made a live. I went in, and let me say one thing. But I have always mentioned Walter in my content because he's just a part of my story, okay? And it's been a consistent part of my content, whether it's from the co-parenting stuff, the deportation stuff. It is what it is. You're a character in here and you made, your, you made it that way. And you asking me to stop talking about you, I won't. Because if you didn't want me to expose the shitty things that you did, you shouldn't have done them, right? Just like you can go on and talk about the things that I did that affected you, you're in your right. But all this content has been made with the message of don't mention me and I won't mention you. It's intimidating me into shutting up and I won't. I won't because I'm not ready to. And speaking on some of this is healing to me. Some of this isn't 
but I will figure that out on my own. Not my abuser telling me, you better shut up or I'm going to keep talking shit. I'm going to keep abusing you. I'm going to keep dragging your family into it. That's not how it works. I will stop speaking on this topic when I am ready. And when I'm triggered, I'm going to talk about it. The phone call triggered me, right? And so I spoke about it. And then all of a sudden, it was like I opened up the floodgates. And um, not because I, I had stopped talking about him. Because if you guys watch my lives, I haven't centered them around him. But I mention him here and there all the time. It's just applicable. <laughs> it's, it comes up. It is what it is. We make jokes. We talk about it. Um, and so... All of these posts came in the last week and some of them are on my YouTube, but I felt the need to organize them and explain them so you guys can see what's going on and how far he's spiraling and why um, I need to protect my children from this man. He is completely unhinged. He has relapsed. He is on the offense. He is crazy, crazy, crazy. Let me just show you guys. Yo, I'm not a violent person. I'm not a violent person unless you're a guy. You've swung on me. You've tried to swing on me. Or you've crossed me super bad. And even if you cross me super bad, I'm gonna take that shit to the chin and smirk. Because I'm always grinning and winning. But this woman is not scared of me because she knows I will never fucking touch her. It's cute though, mamas. You can keep telling the world you're scared of me, mamas. I'd never pull up on you. I'd never pull out unannounced. It's not what I do. You know me. I'm scared of you, you fucking weirdo. I'm scared of you. You know them screws are loose, bro. I know you're not 100% there. I know you're capable of doing something dumb and blaming it on your other personality. How many is there? Like fucking seven of them? OCD, BPD, PTSD. ADD, severe anxiety. You're not all fucking there, bro. I don't want to be the one to put you on blast like that. But, I mean, you, you admitted it yourself. You made a video, and I had a video for your video to decipher your video and your conditions and your BPD and how everything you did aligns with border personality disorder. And it talks about BPD and the drama triangle. That's why you keep bringing me up because you love the drama. You feed off the drama and that feeds you. <laughs> you fucking weirdo. I don't like drama. I'm done with your drama. I don't want to hear from you ever again. Go create drama for someone that likes to entertain it. Never mind. Don't do that because all your fucking followers are there for the drama. And man, you're probably banking it off me, bro. And that's fucking whack. Throw me a bone. Fuck, at least. Anyway, like I was saying, guys, if you are not familiar with the BPD and the drama triangle, please read about it. Please read into it and see how everything this evil, narcissistic, malicious woman with border personality disorder has shown every one of those traits. <laughs> I was a victim. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Last year, I shared with my social media platform that I was diagnosed with um, border personality disorder in 2018. Border personality disorder is a mental health disorder that affects your social relationships, your ability to control your emotions, your impulsiveness, your self worth, etc. Among other things, you can Google it. And. He has clung to this as a way to mock me and convince people that I'm fucking crazy and I'm this and that and I have 10 different personalities. I would not expect somebody that dropped out of high school with a 1.9 GPA to even understand what BPD is, much less to educate others what it is and how it can affect somebody. And also let me say this, that the majority of us have mental health disorders that are undiagnosed. And I'm willing to bet that the father of my children has several. <laughs> Um, I, I think it's really sad that this is something that he chooses to mock because it's something that a lot of us relate to. And the reason why we can't speak out on it is because then we're labeled like we're fucking crazy. And then anytime something happens, oh, it's because she has BPD. She's fucking crazy. She's this, she's that. Um, my BPD was diagnosed in 2018. I have been in and out of treatment, uh, for many, many years. And I've shared these things with him as I was in a relationship with him, right? This is the first video that I see after I host my live 
that it wasn't a big deal. I just, it, I made a live about, you know, the phone call and whatever. We made some comments. It seemed to trigger him and, you know, he went down a spiral on TikTok. This was the first one that I received and I just, it left a really bad taste in my mouth. And this time it hit different. Let me tell you why. Because I was not in the same place that I was in when he was abusing me online after the DV incident. I have done a lot of healing. I have done a lot of empowering. I've done some therapy. I'm hitting the gym every day. So when this video landed on my lap, I was very much ready to speak on it. And I was not going to let him bully me into shutting up about this. I can speak on the domestic violence incident. I can speak on the things that have affected me. I, have, I can speak on the things that you did to me. I am entitled to do that without receiving this type of abuse and being invalidated by people online that I'm a I'm ashamed to real victims of domestic violence. I am a real victim. I am a real survivor and shame on him and anybody else that comes on here trying to invalidate me because you would never know. You weren't here. You weren't here. So you're going off of the the abuser's side of the story. What abuser is going to say, yes, I did it? <laughs> Very few of them. In fact, they, he's pretty much a textbook narcissist. Anyway, so let's go. Let's continue to the rest of, of the, the shit that happened on TikTok. This happened, I want to say two days ago. And when it happened, I was like, you know what? I'm addressing it. I'm addressing it this time. He continued to make tons of TikToks. The last, I, I saved some of them, not all of them, before his account got banned for them. But the last one that was made like a few minutes before I jumped on live was about my children. He brought up my three oldest children again and how I'm a bad mom and how when he was here, my kids loved him and he would, he would take him to the park and they would cry about me not taking them to the park and how I'm a bad mom. Okay. And I was done. I was like, all right, you know what? He can speak whatever he wants to speak, but I'm going to make him uncomfortable this time because I'm not taking it for a second round. I'm not. So I jumped on live that night and I gave my fair share of whatever you want to label it. I pulled out his mental health assessment. I showed how he struggles with cocaine addiction, with substance abuse. I showed, I put the, the spotlight back on him because he's so good at focusing on me. My mental health disorder is what I went through, this and that. I'm fucking crazy. My felonies. All right. So that, that live, I was like, I'm going to make sure he's uncomfortable when he speaks about me in this man in this manner you can speak on you you can but don't bring my children into it the minute you bring my children into it the gloves are off and like i said i'm in a different place i'm not the annie that you left broken in september she's long gone okay so here's the rest of the videos we'll um talk about them again they're two days ago and it doesn't end beginning with this video he actually joined my live on youtube the night that I was hosting the live responding to his TikToks and he decided to make some comments. Hi, hi Goofy, why are you so obsessed with me? And this was his way to try to intimidate me into shutting up because as you can see in this video, I had receipts out that I was going through. We were talking about him and I don't know what got into him to make him jump into my life because I have had many lives and um he's never done this but again something really triggered him and I believe that this was his way of intimidating me into shutting up. We quickly muted him because, again, I was not going to give him direct access to me. He hasn't been able to directly text me, call me, or anything. And him jumping onto my live was his way to try to finesse and, and weasel into communicating directly with me. Bad thoughts about you. Because I'm sure you could hear that clear out there. I didn't see no tears, stupid. You guys talk a lot of shit to me. It's kind of annoying. It's a lot of you fucking dumbass women that back up her narrative. Your kids are going to resent you because they're going to see all the shit I posted, right? Because they're going to see... They're going to see all the shit I posted on fucking social media, right? And that means they're going to see your, their mom's titties out. But they're not going to resent that, right? That's okay. Her dragging me through the mud. The bitch dragged me all over fucking YouTube. They're going to resent her 100%. They're all a little nutcase. I'll just let it be. If they're gonna resent me, they're gonna resent me. I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Let me live, bro. Girls like this are fucking stupid. My kids are gonna resent me for talking a little bit of shit, but they're not gonna resent their mom that keeps them from me. Make it make sense. It's not fucking math then, you fucking m It's enough money off my name. You know what? It's not even her. It's not her that doesn't let me see my kids. It's me. It's the way I am. The way I don't give a fuck about her. 
the way I, I make her feel like I never fucking cared about her. Because it's not about her. It's about my kid. She knows that. I know that. You know that. But you're here talking shit. Even if I gave that bitch a million dollars, she'd keep my kids for me. We all know that. Except her goofy ass followers like you. But it's cool, bro. You can believe whatever you want to believe. I'm not blaming nobody. I'm blaming me. It's my fault I don't see my kids. So these are some of the videos that were posted on TikTok that I began to address on my live that night that he jumped into it. There were additional videos that were made that where he brought in my kids. I didn't save those. I didn't know he was going to get banned so quickly. I actually went on that live to play those videos for you guys. And we all found out in real time that he was banned from TikTok for the hateful post that he was making. Um, from there, you know, I finished out my live. Um, I, I did a private Zoom call with the girls just to kind of get some shit off my chest. But I was like, you know what? I don't want to keep this. Um, I don't want to make this worse because it, it's. It was bad energy. I made that live private for members only because I knew he would then go back, rewatch it, piss himself off even more, or people would repost it and just build the fire, right? So I made it private, members only. And the next morning, I wake up to like floods, or not the next morning, but the next day, I kept getting just tons of DMs of posts that he was just like, had diarrhea on, out the mouth on Instagram. And the posts, he starts calling me out to pull up. Um, you can see that he's he's been drinking. I watched him on Instagram that entire day. I was like, me saco de onda. I was like, why is he calling me out? He literally was behaving like I was a man. Like I was going to go pull up to La Pila to go fight him or something. And uh, it was just crazy to see it unravel. You can see how completely unhinged he is. He has definitely relapsed. He is drinking in all of these videos. And he ends up driving home drunk and wrecking on the motorcycle that he's driving and you can't tell me that he's not drunk or he's not driving drunk because the posts speak for themselves there was a follower that was messaging him that he also replied to i mean you can you can feel the violence through the phone uh, you can feel the aggression through these posts and i'm just gonna go ahead and play them for you so this is the next day after the live um on instagram <coughs> They blocked me because I was talking a bunch of shit. <laughs> Through his uh, DUI treatment and um, drug tests, etc. <clears throat> Maybe he relapsed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, mute. So from there, uh, Mr. Ibarra reports he received a. Mr. Ibarra reports no withdrawal of. Mr. 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 Ibarra reports no withdrawal of Mr. 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 Ibarra reports no Yo, check this out. I'm about to drop a diss track on my baby mama. So if you got a recording of my baby mama saying my name, shoot it. Send it. You know how I always say don't send me shit? Well, now send me all of it. Every time she's mentioned me, every time she's talked about me, and if you got proof, send it my way. <laughs> you fucking whack. Don't take my word for it. Take me on my word for it. Check it out, Rosa. I'm not on one. But anyway, I just wanted to hop on and let you guys know. It's really simple. If you quit mentioning me, I'll quit mentioning you. You know, it's that simple. Deja pistear a gusto, a chingar a tu madre, deja vivir. I just want to know that it's very early in the day and as you can see he's already started drinking this is important for the end of the video <laughs> oh that bum ain't taunting or scaring no one tell her and her stale ass boyfriend to pull up i'm right here bro i ain't never been hiding from nobody if you go to la piela you know where my family's at bro come on now <laughs> Don't make me pull up to Isla. <laughs> no, you bad when you can post from any. Text a message, I don't know the number. Flexing on these niggas, every bone and muscle. Look, you bum, if you don't pull up on me today or tomorrow, 
Just fucking forget about it. I'm not even going to address your bum ass no more. I'm going to know you're whack. I'm going to know you're fucking fake. And what the fuck? Like, oh, you posted a picture. You pulled up to La Piedra. I sent you my address and you didn't do nothing about it. After today, I'm not going to address you no more, you bum. Don't taunt me and then act like the victim. <laughs> How stupid do I sound? Me deportaron porque cometí fraude, pero pues ayúdame. Ah, seas mamón. <laughs> y ahora me van a bloquear en Instagram también. Va a valer verga. I can't get blocked on Instagram because I got a lot of good pictures on here. So, make sure. Ay, perro. Make sure you follow my. Um, my backup Instagram, which is Mexican XJ. When you Google Walter, or when you go search Walter Ibarra on Instagram, va a salir Mexican XJ, and it's a picture of me, but I'm looking to the left instead of the right. <laughs> yeah, bum. Rosa, I'm not on one. Shut up. She has all your your Instagram post from yesterday and today. You dumb fucking hutch. You're the one that posted a, bit, a picture saying you pulled up to Michoacan, to La Piedad, trying to scare somebody, but I dropped my location like, okay, pull up. Stupid. Ah, que pendeja son. Ay, 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 Diosito mío. No me gusta, no me gusta hablar así. Right, a whole ass different person when her ears pop out. She barely had views when it was free and now she's charging side eye. Man, what a bum. <laughs> uh, man. I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed. I'm fucking annoyed. Seeing your kids? No, I haven't seen my kids. Of course, she won't let me see them. I called my. I called like four times on my son's birthday at eight in the morning to say happy birthday to my son. She didn't answer the phone. And you know what? Before that, I hadn't even mentioned her. I haven't even said nothing about her. That's kind of what. That's kind of what tipped the whole fucking jar. When I was like, you know what, I haven't mentioned you in months. I haven't said nothing about you in months. I'm going to call to say happy birthday to my son. Because we all know my son loves me. My son told me he didn't even like that gay boy. Still. He's like, I don't like him. Anna herself told me that my son would be like, you're not my dad. I don't like you. Axel hated him. Axel didn't like him. She told me herself. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, I'm going to not mention her. I'm gonna leave her alone. My son's birthday comes around. I called to say happy birthday to my son. Innocent, happy birthday, I love you, yada, yada, yada. She don't answer the phone. Why, because her pride? Why, because her whack ass boyfriend's next to her? Bro, I don't want you, girl. You can keep her 10 times, bro. Just let me see my son. Yes, to get my cheese man, she's charging. Who's cheese cheeseman is just because he likes to talk shit. Imagine having five whole ass kids and still obsessively glue to your ex every move. Hey. <laughs> right? That's that's what I think is stupid. Like, bro. I don't mention her. I don't bring her up until she drags me for a week. And then when I say something, I'm the bad guy. That's what I don't understand. I don't understand how the world is. You know what I'm saying? This is still double standard bullshit. Like, tengo, tengo que aguantar que hable mal de mí, que diga tantas cosas de mí. Y cuando yo digo algo, yo soy el malo. No, 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 no. Ya me. La dejaste picada. She coming for more. Ya tiene mi ubicación. Si quiere algo, que me hable. She's trying to set you up. Be careful. She's whack. She will not come and bone and fletch. Her or her whack ass boyfriend will not pull up. Bone and flesh themselves, they won't. They might send somebody, but they ain't gonna come themselves. 
genuinely curious why it gets you so upset when she mentions me. Look, this is what this is what bugs the fuck out of me. And it gets me upset because I, I'm I'm quiet. I'm such a chill person. I'm such a like laid back person. I don't give a fuck about her. And then like I'm cool, I'm quiet, I hear, I see it all every day, all day, right? People sending me messages, screenshots, she's saying this, she's saying this. For like two weeks straight. And then I mention her, I'm like, man, this girl's a bum. This girl's whack. She needs me for views. And then my shit blows up with so many people talking shit. So many people bringing up my kids. That's why you can't see your kids. That's why you can't this. That's why you can't that. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like one little thing I say, and that's why I can't see my kids. Your kids are going to see your content, but they're not going to see. That's why I get so upset. She's really trying to get a reaction to get her U visa so she can continue to commit fraud. She's not getting her U visa though. She's committed so much fraud. She's not getting her U visa. She's not. She's not. Trust me. And I'm not even a hater. I've never, you'll never find a message of me trying to reach out to immigration like she did in my immigration case, saying I was gang related, saying I was a drug dealer, saying all kinds of stupid ass shit. She messaged my judge that. That's why they denied my cancellation and deportation thanks to her. But what? I never put her on blast. I never post those fucking messages on blast because why? I don't care. She can fucking, uh, she is whack, bro. I'm not a hater. You know what, mamas? If you get it, go ahead. Go to LA, do porn, do whatever the fuck you want to do. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> no log out, Walter. <laughs> ah! I'm gonna have to log out because they're gonna fucking. That U visa has taken forever. <laughs> I want a U visa too, though. Come on, mamas. If you get a U visa, you wanna come back and get me? I'll cut you a deal, bro. I'll be quiet. I'll say you're the best mom in the world. Pero pues. You know? Dame papeles, bro. She needs content. Yeah, before I get blocked off Instagram, I'm going to have to get off, guys. Plus, I'm about to show up to the bar. I'm going to go have a good time. If she wants to pull up, I'm at Cantinita in La Piedad, Michoacán. Google Cantinita, stupid. I'm sure you can find it. And Rose, I'm not on one. <laughs> are both fucking weenie whackers, bro. Uh, I'm out here just wilding. Somebody tell me to get the fuck off the internet. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who let me wild out on the internet, bro. But take me home. Now take me to Shorty's house. I gotta go. What's your point, you fucking retard? You text me, you stupid. Get the fuck off my shit, bitch. Pendejo. My shit. Go fucking. You're fucking dumb. Get off my shit. Go fucking take care of your kids, stupid. You're fucking stupid. You come to my page like I give a fuck to act cordial to any of you fucking lame ass bitches. Fuck you. Fuck her. Fuck the next three bitches that come talk shit to me. Fuck them all. Oh, somebody come save my life. I just crashed on a fucking scooter. My boy was drunk, so I took his scooter home. Ah! I'm not drunk, but I did eat shit because I slipped on some water. Ow! Ama rodilla! Ama! Me di un putazo! Ah, que buen putazo te me di primo, la neta me! Por güey. Ah, neta güey, no me vas a agarrar agua y me fui volando a la verga, hombre. Yo, the last time I crashed on a scooter, I was like fucking 18, just running amok, right? <laughs> Yo, primo, tiny, this reminds me of the good old days, ya sabes, cuz. 
Ay, yo, I've been missing you, bro. <laughs> Me dio un santo putazo, wey. Like that one time when you didn't drop your black and mild. Like that, cuz. Oh, fuck. My shit is hurting, cuz. But it's all good. I'm going home. I'm gonna take a shower. I'm gonna relax. I'm gonna have a good night. And I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. I thought I was fucking playing, huh? <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> ah, te dije, wey. Might have been a little drunk. Whoa. Um. <laughs> ah! I'm staying off the internet for a while. <laughs> Yeah, oh, little pito. I'm sorry. The last part of the video where he said, like, Yeah, little pito made me laugh because I, we've all been there, right? At some point, a really messy drunk night. He deleted all those posts this morning. That was today. All the posts were deleted. Um, but yeah, like I told you guys, I had been watching his spiral because I wanted to document it. And you might ask, why is this relevant? Why are you doing this? Why are you sharing this? For all of you that always come and come to bat for him and tell me that I'm fucked up for not letting him see his kids and this and that. This is the man that is repeating the same behavior that he had in the U.S. From domestic violence to driving drunk to causing accidents. If you remember, he has a DUI in the States, which is why he ultimately got denied his cancellation of removal, among other things. Where he flipped his truck, he was driving drunk, he broke his leg, he injured the passenger. And he obviously didn't learn from that because he's doing it out here. It's not the first time he's driven drunk. If you guys remember, I mentioned my uh, truck was impounded because we left the bar together one night and he had been drinking. That was also partly my responsibility. Never did it again. Um, I quickly realized that something about him attracted <laughs> bad energy, the cops all the time. Um, so anyway, uh, th that incident for me was it. And ever since, keep in mind, when it happened here, we went to a bar and we had very little to drink, maybe two beers at the most. And I actually hadn't even drank at all. We were doing a live and he ended up driving home. I didn't know, I didn't believe he was intoxicated, but when we got stopped, he smelled like liquor. They did a, a breathalyzer on him. My shit got impounded. He almost went to jail. I had to pay the cops to keep him out of jail. And I ended up spending a week trying to get my truck back. After that incident, I had a long talk with him. And I was like, look, this has never happened to me before in my four years of being here. And so this is a lesson for me as well. Anytime we go out, we're Ubering. It doesn't matter how much we're drinking. Even if we're only going to have one beer, we're going to Uber. Because this is no joke, right? Among... Among the reasons, like, yeah, it sucks that I got my car towed, but I'm not a drunk driver. I'm not. I'm not saying I've never done it. As a young dumbass, yes, I have done it. I don't do it anymore for several reasons because now I'm the type of person that I'm nervous on the road when these types of people are driving and I have my kids in the truck. And I'm going to just leave it at that. I don't do it anymore. I don't partic to participate in it. I yelled at him. We had a lot of issues when he was here because of his drinking where he would drink even after the incident where my shit got towed. He would have beer in his fucking car with the kids, all sorts of shit. He is an alcoholic and he is unhinged in these videos and we can see it. And I don't want to hear the, I wasn't drunk, but you, you guys can clearly see he was fucked up. He got on that motorcycle, left the bar, he wrecked it. Thank God nothing farther happened to him because I don't wish ill on him, but something could have seriously happened to someone else. And this is the man that you guys are constantly in my comments defending that I should co-parent with, that I should let him see my kids. Why? So he could throw them on his fucking bike when he's leaving the bar? Why would I, why would I allow access to an alcoholic that is spiraling to my children? Among the other reasons why I don't need to let him have access to me, but for them, if I was still committing the same crimes, if I was still in the same patterns that I had in the States, you guys would be the first to tell me I'm a piece of shit mom and they should take the, those kids from her. So I'm trying to understand why this man is currently defended in my comment section and I'm attacked and, I, and I'm told that I should be doing this, I should be doing that and the kids are going to resent you and you shouldn't be keeping them from their dad. Yes, I fucking should. And this is exactly why. Because this is who he is, this is what he's doing and this is what he will always be because this is what he's always been. He doesn't learn, he doesn't change, he doesn't grow, he just laughs it off. 
and at the end of the day someone's going to end up hurt and it's not going to be me and it's not going to be my children and thank you for talking <laughs> thank you for coming to my ted talk um i needed to make this video to outline all of this for you guys from what happened in the past and what's still currently happening and why i cannot allow him back into my life or my children's and why i have to speak out against what's being still being done to me okay if you can look at these videos and still believe that i'm the aggressor i'm the narcissist i'm the abusive one i'm the bad parent okay i respect your opinion but these videos, everything I have showed, that is where I base my decisions off for myself and my children. That is where I validate my feelings. And I am tired of being invalidated by this person who is in nowhere, in no types of shape to be dissecting me or ed trying to educate people on BPD or parenthood or my motherhood. None of that. You cannot speak on me when this is a type of fucking mess that you are on. I take that back. You can't speak on me. I can't. I'm not here to make this video to speak louder than him, right? Because he's entitled to speak. He's entitled to share his experiences, whatever. But do so without attacking me and my family and my children and my motherhood. Because I'm not attacking you. I'm not telling you you're a piece of shit. You're this, you're that. I'm just showing you what's happened. I'm showing you the events, the experiences that I have had with this man that have been traumatic and that have been invalidated by him and thousands of people on the internet. That's all. And, you know, I don't wish him ill. I wish him well. I, it makes me sad to see him like this. At the end of the day, I don't really wish ill on him. Okay. I do have bitterness in my heart. I do have resentment. I do have a lot of pain. But I hope he gets his shit together because at this rate... I could see something terrible happening to him out here and we only time will tell. So this facade that he has presented that he has his shit together and I just bought a house and I'm doing this and I don't mention her is all a crock of shit. And just like you were so quick to call me out on supposedly for all my fuckery when really it's projection of your own shit. Your shit is, you don't have your shit together. You're spiraling. You've been drinking nonstop since you arrived in Mexico. You never stopped. You never will. You just got better at hiding it or denying it or making it seem like it's not a big deal. I guarantee you if you take a drug test, you're not clean. And so next time you think about picking up that phone call or picking up that phone, don't because I won't answer. Next time you think about, you know, slandering my motherhood and bringing up my children, just know I will reply with this type of shit with receipts because to the date you have made so there have been so many stories and lies presented to you guys about me and my family and my kids but I have not seen a single receipt for anything from the she was scamming GRC this man never had any access to my bank records he never knew how much money I ever had he never knew how much money I made he nothing that his man has ever said has been actually proved and those lies have been used to invalidate my facts and it stops today thank you for coming to my ted talk this video took me all day to put together i'm leaving it to rest here you can drop your comments i'm not going to tell you this is the last time i'm going to address it because it's probably not and if you're tired of hearing about this i'm sorry this is a current event in my life this is current abuse that i'm dealing with and healing from and these are things that still affect me I am not someone that's going to tell you, I don't care what he says. I don't care what he does. It very much affects me and my healing and my children's very much. So these are not just social media posts to me. These, these are, this is much more than just social media posts to me as someone who was trying to recover and heal from the traumatic events that I dealt with last year and all the shit we've already had to deal with in the States. Okay. So if this content bores you, if you're frustrated with hearing me talk talking about it, I'm sorry. Um, click past, ignore, unsubscribe. I have to keep my journey raw and real. If and, and if I got up here and I told you guys, I'm fine, let's raffle these cups and everything's going great, it's not. And I'm a phony for it, okay? This is what's currently, what I'm currently struggling with, what I'm currently trying to get past, what I'm currently regressing in, whatever you wanna call it. This is my journey and it's still being told. Oh,